Hello YouTube, hello Forever Endeavors family. I want to give you an update. So we've had a few setbacks on the on the uh, BAMF rebuild. You see this nice new cone in here. I'd love to tell you I did this. I did not do this. I bought this. Um, I tried to resurrect, try to do what I was going to do, what I said I was going to do in the last video. I bought the new surround. I cleaned up the original cone. I got it all stripped and it was looking good. And I was running out of my Simply Speakers glue and I was sort of experimenting with the E6000, which is a pretty good glue, but not the way I was going to try to use it. Um, but I didn't have much of a reference to go by, so I just tried to do it anyway. So I put the cone down on the surround. I glued the outside edge with Simply Speakers glue. That way, everything would hold still while we got this put in place down onto the cone like this. So, um, so the Simply Speakers glue worked awesome on the outside edge and uh, that dried and then I worked, I flipped it over and my plan was this is supposed to lay down like this. It's supposed to be beveled and it's supposed to lay on the cone. Well, it just didn't. It was sticking out just like you see it now, sticking straight out. So uh, my plan was to put the E6000 underneath and work it down and I, you know, it's got some, it's got some extra material there. So I thought it wasn't gonna be a big deal. It would lay on down as the glue got tacky. So I started pressing and it did start to tack up after about 15 minutes and um, but it just wasn't staying down and so I kept working with it and E6000 I believe is like a silicone based glue and it started acting just like you would expect silicone to do in a scenario where you're pressing it down and it's pulling back up again it started to like coagulate and make lumps and uh, it was making a mess and I was still facing having to stitch the thing and I was like nobody's really gonna do this they're just gonna buy the cone because the cone isn't that much more than the surround is anyway so I just stopped and pulled the cone off of the surround before the glue was 100% fully cured and I had to throw the whole thing away so I kind of saved this. I don't know what for. I'll probably never use it for anything. But end up, ended up doing the same thing I should have done right from Jump Street. Just bought a cone. You know, it's just a smart thing to do. There's not that much more money and it's done already. I guess I just wanted to see if I could do it. And I think I could have gotten through it okay uh, had there been a better fit here. I'm not blaming anybody for that. I'm sure there's people that can work with that the way it is and get it done. Um, I'm just not there yet, still new, still learning this stuff. But anyway, so then I was presented with another setback in my mind was, okay, well now we're getting into some nice, you know, equipment, you know, nice cone. We got the eight layer voice coil. It's a, copper it's a nice piece we got some really good spiders so we're kind of getting into a little bit of money and we still have this motor that in my mind is uh just inadequate the basket i've grown to really kind of like it but uh i just can't get i just can't wrap my head around those little motors that are on here and um initially i was like yeah i'll never probably turn it up all that loud or whatever I'm just kind of the guy, I'm, I'm, I'm that guy that if I'm gonna do it, I'm just gonna do it uh, all the way. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna go all the way if we're gonna go that far with it. So, and um, so what I think I'm gonna do as of right now, don't hold me to it, but I believe what we're gonna do, I bought this kicker, CVX, probably, a year ago my buddy owns a pawn shop 
and uh, it had a ripped surround and it's pretty wore out still works but the spider is kind of sagging like when you set it up right the cone actually settles down a little bit it's just someone beat the brakes off that thing and if you push on it you can kind of feel coil rub uh, I haven't really put a bunch of power to it but anyway I saw it in the shop and I said what you doing with this thing man he said give me 40 bucks and uh I was like, all right. I was pretty much set on buying it. I looked at the surround. I saw it was torn. I said, man, the surround's got a rip in it. He said, give me 20 bucks. So, <laughs> so I got it for 20 bucks, which is pretty, pretty incredible. Um, this motor is almost a half an inch deeper than this motor. And it's bigger diameter and it's just a higher quality motor. Um, it's well made, good stuff. You're talking about it, you know, this speaker was 150 bucks or something, 175 maybe when it was new and these are these go for about $400. Uh, I mean, the dollar amount doesn't always equate to quality, but I've always been kind of a kicker fan boy. And this is, you can look around this basket and the machine works better and stuff like that. But this basket fits my cone better. It's got more venting. I just like it a little more on the outside um, so and I only have one of these kickers so I have someone right now looking Patrick at Robot Underground is looking for a motor he thinks he might have one in the shop so if I can get that motor from him and I can pull this motor off of here because this speaker's pretty much had it I mean it's pretty much had it then we're gonna rebuild both of the BAMPs with these cones right here, the CVX motors, and uh, if the eight layer coil, I still have to see how big the gap is in this. The depth is great. It's, it gives us the depth so that the voice coil is not gonna bottom out. So that's really the bottom line. These right here, the machine works clean on them. They did a decent job. They're just not deep enough for the size spider that's here and all that so um we can use the cvx motor we're never going to bottom it out in the cvx motor and it's a little bigger so we're going to have a little more motor force and everything will just be dialed in my mind anyway so <clears throat> so this basket cvx motor the new cones from lord of base and uh yet to be seen if we can use the eight layer coil but spider works and all of that. So that's gonna be the new plan for the BAMF 15s. And I'll do something else with these motors because these are these are these are good motors. They're just maybe better for like a, a 10 or 12 with a smaller spider. And what I like about what they did here was it makes me feel good about the basket too, is what you can't see is a good machine work. Uh, when everything's assembled. Cheap speakers, generally, when you pull them apart, this machine work is bad in here. Nothing's painted, it's raw. Sometimes there'll be surface rust. But they went out of their way to put a good finish on this so it wouldn't corrode. The machine work is clean and smooth. They're pretty good quality. Just, they're kind of shallow for that big giant spider. So, I know I'm probably repeating myself, but that's okay. It's all right. It's all right, man. But, uh... That's what we're doing moving forwards. So I will get back with you guys as soon as I know something from Patrick. But we can go ahead and tear into this one, recover the motor. I'm probably going to have to drill new holes. I don't care. I'll do it. Uh, hopefully, the, mo the holes will match, but that'd be, that'd be a, I don't know. I don't expect that to happen. But yeah, so I can break this one down and start the process and we can go ahead and probably put this one together if the voice coil fits this gap. If not, we'll have to get another voice coil that fits this gap. I'd rather it be a hair loose and uh, not have any chance of any rubbing than to be so tight. This one's fairly close to, it's a tight fit in here. 
it's snug. So beautiful coil though. I measured them all 1.2, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3. And then you just parallel, parallel, and then you have two, two ohm coils, roughly. And then you go parallel, with, I'm gonna go parallel with that to end up at around four ohms for my carver amp that they're gonna hook to. Later on, if I put them in a car, I can go one ohm. So, but you can see, I don't know, that fits all right. To me, it's a little snug. We're learning, you know? The challenge is okay. It's funny, some of the wires are touching and you can feel the resistance when you... You feel the power kind of pushing back on it because it's charging itself just a little. But anyway, yeah, hopefully this fits in here. If not, we just have to get some different coils. But, but like I said before, these being tighter, as long as we get them centered perfect, uh, they say that equates to better sound quality because it's closer in the gap. I guess it depends on how much force the motor makes and how true that really is. I mean, if it's, I don't know. So it's all speculation until it's not. So, but that's where we're at. Thanks for hanging in there. Sorry it was a long stretch between there, but I messed the cone up and scratched my head for about a week as to how to move forwards with it. And then these popped up on Lord of Bass website. I've been I've scrolled through his website so many times and never seen these. Either I didn't either they just weren't on the eBay site and they were maybe on the website and I I never did think about looking at his website. I just thought whatever was on eBay is what he had. Uh but anyway, I was scrolling through eBay again and lo and behold, boom, these are perfect. I mean they are perfect. You put the spider in here and you set this in, it is it just does touch the spider and it fits this voice coil perfect. So I'm super happy about these cones. Uh, we are getting into a little bit of money. Um, these weren't cheap, you know, but we'll go over all that after the build is over. But the good news is this was 20 bucks. So we can get another motor uh, from Patrick, a good solid price than uh, I think we can build some real serious contenders here without a bunch of money. And um I'm starting to get to where I want to crank it up a little more than I did before. I'm just, you know, tastes are changing a little. So I'm gonna make something that'll handle the power. And I'm still gonna use my other ones that I built. And they'll be fine for sure. I put uh I put some pretty big power to them the other day, just free air, and I was uh I was maxing out the old carver four ohms so that was about 600 watts free air and they were just doing just fine and uh there was no mechanical noise or anything like that so super happy with the initial subs we built and uh but they're going to probably be tuned a little higher and then these are going to be tuned a little lower not a bunch you know maybe i'll tune those at 40 and above you know, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just talking, but that's where we're at. So thank you guys for hanging in there, and we will be back when we figure out the motor situation.